It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Trump's pick for Secretary of Human and Health Services, Tom Price, faced questions from both Republicans and Democrats on Wednesday. The hearings gave members of Congress an opportunity to ask their fellow Republican House representative from Georgia about his policy positions on health care. The formal confirmation hearing will take place next Tuesday in front of Senate Finance Committee. Joining us now to discuss Tom Price as a potential health and Human Services Secretary is Adam Gaffney. Adam is an instructor in medicine at Harvard Medical School. He writes about health care policy and politics and is a board member of Physicians for a National Health Program. Thanks for joining us today, Adam. Thank you for having me. So, Adam, um, Tom Price faced some tough questions from Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders during the hearing. So. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders asked Price about whether he would pursue efforts towards a truly universal health care system. This exchange is a bit lengthy, but let's have a look. Congressman Price, the United States of America is the only major country on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right. Canada does it. Every major country in Europe does it. Do you believe that health care is a right of all Americans, whether they're rich or they're poor, should people, because they are Americans, be able to go to the doctor when they need to, be able to go into a hospital because they are Americans? Yes, we're a compassionate society. No, we're not a compassionate society. In terms of our relationship to poor and working people, our record is worse than virtually any other country on earth. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any other major country on earth, and half of our senior older workers have nothing set aside for retirement. So I don't think compared to other countries, we are particularly compassionate. But my question is, in Canada, in other countries, all people have the right to get health care. Do you believe we should move in that direction? If you want to talk about other health countries' health care systems, there are consequences to the decisions that they've made, just as there are consequences to the decisions that we've made. I believe and I look forward to working with you to make certain that every single American has access to the highest quality care and coverage that is possible. Has access to does not mean that they are guaranteed health care. I have access to buying a $10 million home. I don't have the money to do that. And that's why the, the, we, we, we believe it's appropriate to put in place a system that gives every person the financial feasibility to be able to purchase the coverage that they want for themselves and for their family. Again, not what the government forces them to buy. Yeah, but if they don't have any, well, that's a longer story. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adam, let me get your thoughts on that exchange. Well, I think that exchange says it all about the meaninglessness of the Republicans' um, proposal for, quote unquote, universal access. The New York Times reported, I think it was last week, that the um, Republican House was, was claiming that whatever they replaced the Affordable Care Act uh, with would grant universal access. And that phrase means nothing, as I think Senator Sanders um, asserts. Um, we all have access to purchase anything. You know, you can go and buy a gourmet dinner, a house, or a Corvette. Uh, having access to purchase something is not um, having it itself. So, you know, what we're seeing is almost a linguistic game, I think, a uh, rhetorical game, rather, uh, in which um, the, the idea of universal health care, um, that language of universalism is being diluted to describe something that's nothing like universal health care. So Adam Sanders also asked whether Price would take a big uh, take on Big Pharma with the toughness suggested by Trump during his press conference last week. Here's what Trump had to say. We have to get our drug industry coming back. Our drug industry has been disastrous. They're leaving left and right. They supply our drugs, but they don't make them here to a large extent. And the other thing we have to do is create new bidding procedures for the drug industry because uh, they're getting away with murder. Uh, pharma, pharma has a lot of lobbies, a lot of lobbyists, and a lot of power. And there's very little bidding on drugs. We're the largest buyer of drugs in the world, and yet we don't bid properly. And we're going to start bidding. I'm going to save billions of dollars over a period of time. I guess the question is whether his nominee for Health and Human Services and, of course, his potential pick for the FDA will take any steps towards lowering the prescription drug prices. What do you think, Adam? 
Well, I'm skeptical that the Trump administration is going to follow through uh, with its claim to take on big pharma. I'll be happy if I'm proved wrong on that, uh, but I'm skeptical. If you look at their overall orientation, it's extremely pro-corporate, um, it's extremely pro-rich. Um, I am skeptical that they're going to be as aggressive about drug prices as they claim. If they wanted to do what they're talking about, um, they're going to need to pass legislation that would allow Medicare to directly negotiate drug prices uh, in order to undo the 2003 Medicare uh, Modernization Act provision that prevents them from doing so. I'll be happy if I'm wrong about the Trump administration at this point, uh, but I'm skeptical that he's going to be um, um, this you know, thorn in the side of big pharma like he claims to be. Um, and certainly nothing that uh, Price said uh, in the hearings today suggests that he was particularly keen on, on taking on big pharma either. Adam, the issue of cost control or how much this current policy, uh, uh, the uh, Affordable Health Care Act, is costing people seems to be a concern, even for the Republicans. In fact, uh, Republican Rand Paul at the hearing included a question about high-risk pools and associated uh, costs uh, related to it. What are these proposals? Uh, what does it entail in terms of uh, what the Republicans are thinking at this time? Well, I think the Republicans are realizing that politically it is going to be very difficult to simply uh, repeal the Affordable Care Act and put nothing in its place. In fact, uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, um, the, the chairman uh, who was questioning price, you know, um, asserted several times that the Republicans needed to both um, repeal and replace. So what, you know, what, what are they going to replace it with is the big question. And so um, they're realizing it's not so easy to do. And so they're coming up with a number of stopgap measures um, that could potentially help certain individuals. Um, you know, I think what we're going to see is some sort of replacement plan um, at some point is probably going to resemble uh, you know, Paul Ryan's GOP plan that they put forth in June, uh, which Price has actually signed on for. Uh, and it might incorporate such things as replacing the Affordable Care Act subsidies with tax credits, uh, high risk pools for people who are who are pushed out of the insurance market, a watered down protections for uh, pre-existing conditions. So I think we're going to see an overall um, deterioration of some of the um, protections of the Affordable Care Act, maybe not their outright elimination, uh, as well as an overall shift towards more regressive ways of financing the health care system. Right. Um, Tom Price's history is also very relevant. Um, he seems to have some uh, insurance industries and uh, pharma um, in his history. Um, in terms of his business relationships. Uh, can you highlight some of those conflicts that he faces now? This is going to be a serious issue for him moving forward, I think. Um, you know, Walt, last month, the Wall Street Journal reported that he had traded uh, over $300,000 in stock um, in, in stock for, you know, pharma, insurance companies, healthcare industry stock over four years. During that period, he was very much involved in passing legislation um, that, was a, that would affect those very same industries. And at the same time, he was receiving uh, corporate um, uh, money from those um, for his campaign, as do many politicians. Uh, but the plot is thickening a little bit. Um, one of the things that came up in the hearing was uh, a particularly problematic purchase he made of stock off of the open market. This was uh, originally reported by Kaiser Health News. Um, they found that he had purchased a Australian pharmaceutical company um, uh, called Immunogenetics that um, uh, you know may have potentially been on this, the, a, a tip from uh, Chris Collins, who's on the board of the company and who's also in Congress. So we're seeing a number of potential ethical issues um, pertaining to sort of his position uh, in the industry at, at the boundaries of the uh, medical industrial complex, as it's sometimes called. Um, Adam, you spent yeah. four hours watching the hearings today. Did this issue come up at all? Repeatedly, in fact. Uh, it was a repeated issue uh, brought by multiple senators, including especially Senator uh, Murray, who uh, pointedly asked him about, um, about the Australian pharmaceutical company that I mentioned. Um, there was another issue that came up. Uh, Price had purchased a stock for a medical device company. Uh, within a week, um, this was last year, um, he had introduced legislation that would actually help that company. Um, and actually later on, uh, and this was initially reported by CNN, I should add, um, 
the, that company actually gave to his campaign. That issue, he um, defended it on the basis of um, saying that he hadn't actually picked that stock himself, that his stockbroker had picked it uh, without his knowledge. Uh, but I think at the very least, this shows a compromised judgment, um, a lapse in judgment, and really um, loyalties that are unclear. Um, and I think it's going to be a serious issue for him. Is it serious enough that his confirmation is in question? I think the question, really, the, the, the big, most of this is, I think, considered legal, or is legal, rather. The, the real question will be, and I don't have the expertise to answer this, is whether um, the purchase of the, um, uh, the, the Australian pharmaceutical company I mentioned could potentially have been an instance of insider trading. Um, and that we don't know yet. And again, I'm not an expert in some of those um, uh, areas of the law. Uh, that remains to be seen. But yes, I think if in fact that uh, you know more is determined or more light is shed on that, that could potentially compromise him, I think. All right. Now, Republicans have regularly depicted Obamacare as a root of the health care crisis in the country. Meanwhile, Democrats, such as Minnesota Senator Al Franken, for example, in today's hearing argued that Obamacare, uh, and let me quote here, bent the cost curve uh, he, where he has the Affordable Health Care Act and our health care system as a stepping stone for a single payer system. Do you agree with that? And um, do you think that, uh, that the Democrats plan to make the overall Affordable Health Care Act more affordable in the long run for everyone? I would agree with the case that um, Al Franken made that the biggest risk pool, which he said today, would be um, a Medicare for all program. And so I think, you know, part of the problem here and part of the reason why the Republicans are able to criticize the ACA so much is that the ACA left many things undone. So they're able to make legitimate critiques. Um, Tom Price brought up the fact that, you know, 20 million, more than 20 million Americans are still uninsured. Um, he talked a lot about high deductibles that are preventing Americans from uh, from purchasing health care. And he's correct. Those are both problems, uninsurance and underinsurance. Now, his plan would make both of those problems worse, in my opinion. Uh, but it doesn't detract from the fact that this makes for um, effective talking points. Um, so I don't know what the Democrats will do. What I hope... Um, uh, all politicians do, is to realize that the Affordable Care Act was not enough, it left a lot undone, um, and also realize that the Republican replacement will actually just exacerbate its weaknesses while eliminating the parts that actually help people. Um, and so I hope when that realization happens um, uh, that we do move forward uh, with new legislation that would actually create, as Bernie Sanders put it, a right to health care in this country, which we still lack even today. Right. And um, earlier in that exchange that uh, we showed with, between Bernie Sanders and Price, um, Price was saying that, you know, comparing uh, our health care system to other countries, if you want to go there, he had a case to be made. Um, would you agree with that? I mean, Bernie Sanders was clearly saying, you know, so many developed countries in the world offer health care to their uh, population, but the U.S. doesn't. Where do you think Price was going with that? I think that he was probably, I know where he was going. He was sort of darkly suggesting that we don't want the scary socialized medicine that exists in places like Canada, um, you know, or the U.K., there's a lot of myths that are spread about the nature of those healthcare systems. Um, you know, you hear this myth about our Canadians flocking into the United States because they can't get healthcare they need there. That's been shown to be a myth. Um, so I think he was sort of um, invoking the specter of socialized medicine as something that, you know, involves rationing and, 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 and other hard choices. And the reality is, is that those are myths. Um, you know, we spend uh, uh, much more per capita than all of these countries do, in many cases, double as much. Um, we don't cover the entirety of our population. Uh, we actually don't achieve better outcomes in terms of basic things like life expectancy or infant mortality, or even um, you know um, when people look at mortality, that's that's actually uh, amenable to, to treatment. Uh, interestingly, so 
you know, this, this is a longstanding tradition of, again, invoking um, this sort of uh, fear of socialized medicine, when in fact, we know that, um, call it socialized medicine if you want to, it actually outperforms our more market-based system by a long shot. And let me endorse that here, having spent many, many, many years in Canada and having had three children there, um, I have never seen a medical bill or have waited in line for any uh, services that was required for, um, and requested from my doctor. So, uh, testimony here, it works. Thanks so much for joining us, Adam. Real pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.